Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the practice questions on finding the mode or the modal class from a frequency table and the range from a frequency table. If you need any extra help on these topics, if you go to Corp Maths and go to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video numbers 56A and 57A, there's dedicated video tutorials there on finding the mode or the modal class from a frequency table and also the range from a frequency table. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, question number one. Question number one says Josie asks her friend to choose their favourite colour and here are the results. So we've got red, blue, yellow and so on. And part A says complete the tally chart and frequency column to, to show the results. So let's complete this table. So we've got red, red, blue, blue, yellow, yellow, red, red and I'll just do the rest now. Okay, so we've completed the tally column. Now let's complete the frequency column. So that's three, one, eight and three. So we've completed the frequency column and then the next part says which color is the mode. So remember the mode is the one with the highest frequency, it's the one that occurs the most. And as you can see here, red has got a frequency of eight, it's much higher than all the other frequencies, so red is the mode. So which color is the mode? The answer would be red because it's the one with the highest frequency. Okay, let's have a look at the next question, question number two. So question number two says, a teacher asks the students in his class how they travel to school and the table shows the results. So we've got method, bicycle, bus, car and walk and we've got the frequencies. And the question says, write down the method of travel that is the mode. So we're looking for the one that occurs the most often, so the one with the highest frequency. So if we have a look at the frequencies, three people travel by bicycle, nine by bus, eight by car and six walk. So as you can see, nine by bus, that's the one with the highest frequency. So which method of transport is the mode, which method of travel is the mode, that's going to be bus. That's the method of travel that has the highest frequency. Okay, next, question number three. Okay, so question number three. Question number three says, Molly rolls the dice 100 times and she records the number shown on the dice and here are the results. So she got 18 ones, 15 twos, 16 threes, 19 fours, 15 fives and 17 sixes. And the question says, write down the modal score shown on the dice. So modal, that just means the one that occurs the most, so the most common number that's shown on the dice. So that's going to be the one with the highest frequency. So the one with the highest frequency would be a four. So the score that she see most often whenever she rolled the dice was a four. So the mode the modal score was a four, so one with the highest frequency. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. Okay, so question number four says, Noel records the number of oranges in 30 punnets. So he's got 30 punnets of oranges, and he records the number of oranges in each of those punnets. And the table shows his results. So in three punnets, he had eight oranges. In 15 punnets, he had nine oranges. In 11 punnets, he had 10 oranges. And in one punnet, he was quite lucky and had 11 oranges. And the question says, work out the range of the number of oranges in the punnets. So let's have a look at the number of oranges in the punnets. So we would write down the number of oranges in the punnets. We would write... 8, 8, 8, 3, 8, 15, 9, 11, 10, and 1, 11. And remember to calculate the range. We take the highest number, the greatest number, and subtract the lowest number. So the greatest number of oranges in the punnet was 11, so it's going to be 11. And then we're going to subtract the lowest number of oranges in the punnet, that's 8. And 11 take away 8 is equal to 3. So the range of the number of oranges in the punnets would be 3. And that's it. And if you wrote that in that list of numbers, you would see that the biggest one was 11, the smallest one was an 8, and if you were to take them away, you get an answer of 3. So the range is 3. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 5. So question number 5 says, a charity receives a number of donations on their website, and the table shows information about the donations received. So 35 times they received a £5 donation, on 58 occasions they received a £10 donation, and so on. And then it says, Henry says the mode of the donations is £10. So he said the donation that they received the most often, the one that occurs the most often or most frequent, was £10. And it says, is Henry correct? Explain your answer. So let's have a look at the frequency column. So in terms of £10, that occurred 58 times. But if we have a look here, we've got a higher frequency, £20. 61 times there was a £20 donation. So that means that the mode is £20 because it's the one with the highest frequency. So the mode is £20, not actually £10. So let's explain that. And that's it, I've just explained, we're asked, is Henry correct? No, the mode is £20, not £10, as it has the highest frequency, because £20 is the highest frequency. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number six. Okay, so question number six, we're told that Edward works in a shop and he records the number of items bought by his first 40 customers. So the first 40 customers, he counts the number of items that each person bought. So nine customers bought one item, 14 customers bought two items, eight customers bought three items, five customers bought four items, three customers bought five items, and one customer bought six items. 
Okay, and then we're asked part eight is find the mode. So let's look for the number of items with the highest frequency. So in terms of the frequency column here, the highest frequency is 14. So that means the mode is two. So that's the most common number of items bought by the customers. So the mode is two, it's the one with the highest frequency. Okay, then part B, part B says work out the range. So if we wrote down this list of numbers, we'd have nine number ones, 14 number twos, eight number threes, five number fours, three number fives, and one number six. And remember the range is the largest take away the smallest. So the largest number in that list would be six. The smallest number in that list would be one. So if we do six subtract one, that'd be the range, the range of the number of items bought. So six take away one is equal to five. So the range is five. Okay, and then part C. Part C says work out the total number of items bought by the 40 customers. Okay, so we want to find the total number of items bought by these customers. So we could write a list. We could write down nine number ones. We could write one, 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 nine times, 14 number twos, eight number threes, five number fours, three number fives, and one number six. And then that list would be the number of items that the customers bought. And then if we added them all up, then that would be the grand total. But there's 40 customers, so I probably wouldn't want to do that because it might take a bit of time or I might miss a number in that list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Consider a slightly different way. If nine customers bought one item, altogether they would buy nine items. If 14 customers bought two items, those 14 customers bought two items each, that'll be 28 items. If eight customers bought three items, well, eight times three is 24, that means they would buy these eight customers have bought 24 items altogether because they bought three each. If five customers bought four items each, that'll be five times four is 20 items altogether. If three customers bought five items each, three times five is 15, so that'd be 15 items. And if one customer bought six items, that's six items. So we've now got the number of items that these customers bought, these customers bought, these customers bought, and so on. If we add them up, then that'll be the grand total. And as a calculator question, that's quite nice. We can just add these up on our calculator. And that answer is 102. So that means that they bought 102 items altogether. So the question says, work out the total number of items bought by the 40 customers. The answer is 102. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, the first sentence of a story contains 22 words, and the table shows the number of letters in each word. So in this sentence that has 22 words, three of the words have two letters, four of the words have three letters, seven of the words have four letters, three of the words have five letters, three of the words have six letters, and two of the words have seven letters. And part A says, find the mode. So that's the one with the highest frequency. So in terms of our frequency, the highest frequency is seven. So that means that seven of the words had four letters. So that means the mode is four. So that means that the mode is four. It's the one with the highest frequency. Okay, next, the range. Well, that's going to be the biggest takeaway, the smallest. So there's seven letters in the longest words, and there's two letters in the shortest words. So if we do seven, take away two, that'll be the range. That'll be the range of the number of letters. So we're going to do seven, subtract two. And seven, subtract two is equal to five. So the range is equal to five, because seven, subtract two, the longest word, take away the shortest word, seven, take away two, is equal to five. The biggest take away the smallest. Okay, and then, part C, we're then told that the next word has got eight letters. So there's another word and it's got eight letters. So the next word in the story has got, it's got eight letters. And then we're asked, circle how that will affect the mode and the range. So let's start off with the mode. So in terms of the mode, that's the most common one. Well, there's only one with number eight. Well, that means that the one with the highest frequency is still four. So the mode will actually stay the same. It'll still remain four. So the mode will remain the same. And then, and then we're asked how it'll affect the range. Well, in terms of the range, that's the biggest takeaway, the smallest. The range was five. When this new word comes along with eight letters, well, the biggest word now has got eight letters. So we would do eight subtract the smallest, which is two, and eight subtract two is equal to six. So the range will now increase to six. It was five, and it's now gone up to six. So that means the range will increase. So that means the next word that's got eight letters will affect the range. It'll increase the range. It'll move from five to six. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number eight. So question number eight says the table shows the heights of students in a class. So we've got two students. So we've got a height that's bigger than 150 centimeters, but less than or equal to 155 centimeters, and so on. So this is a group frequency table. And we've been asked to write down the modal class interval. So we've got our class intervals here, and we want to write down the modal class interval. So that's the class interval with the highest frequency, the one where most students are in that class interval. So if we have a look here, the class interval with the highest frequency, there's the highest frequency. So the class interval with the highest frequency would be this one. The height is bigger than 155 centimeters, but less than or equal to 160 centimeters. So let's write that. The height is bigger than 155 centimeters, but less than or equal to 160 centimeters. And that's it. So that's the modal class interval. It's the class interval with the highest frequency. And that's it. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. So question number nine says, the time taken to deliver orders from a restaurant were recorded over a weekend. So these are all the delivery times. So one delivery was really quick. It was more than not minutes, but less than or equal to 10 minutes. So it was a really quick delivery. And then we've got all the times of the deliveries. And obviously this is a group frequency table. So we've got our class intervals here. And we're asked to write down the modal class intervals. So that's the class interval with the highest frequency. So the class interval with the highest frequency, well, there's the highest frequency. So the class interval with the highest frequency would be this one. It's a time is bigger than 30 minutes, but less than or equal to 40 minutes. So that's the most common time interval. So that's the modal class interval. So let's write that down. So the time is bigger than 30 minutes, but less than or equal to 40 minutes. And that's it, that's the modal class interval. It's the one that occurs the most often. Okay, and let's look at our last question. Okay, so question number 10. Question number 10, we've got the ages of a company's employees are shown in the table below. So we've got the ages of the company's employees. So these are all the company's employees. We've got 72 employees that are older than 20, but less than or equal to 30. 50 employees that are older than 30, but less than or equal to 40, and so on. And part A says write down the modal class interval. So that's the class interval that occurs the most often. So let's look for the highest frequency. There's the highest frequency. So the modal class interval will be this one. The age is older than 20, but less than or equal to 30. So let's write that down. And that's it, so that's the modal class interval. Okay, then part B, part B says, find the fraction of the employees that are over 50 years old. So you wanna find what fraction of these employees are over 50. So let's look at the table. I'm going to, to begin with, I'm gonna work out how many people there are all together. I'm just gonna rub this over working out to begin with, just to help us sort of visualize it a bit more clearly or see it more clearly. So in terms of this table, I wanna work out the fraction that are older than 50. So before that, I wanna find out how many employees there are all together. Now, the question doesn't tell us, sometimes we're lucky and it tells us, but this time it doesn't, but it's a calculator of questions that's okay so we can do 72 plus 50 plus 54 plus 44 plus 29 and that's equal to 249 so there's 249 employees in this company uh, so that's going to be our denominator it's going to be out of 249 and we want to find the fraction that are over 50 so how many are over 50 will be on the numerator so let's go to our table and find out how many are over 50 so let's look for the employees that are over 50 years old so these won't be because they're older than 20 but less than or equal to 30 these employees are older than 30 but less than or equal to 40 years old these customers are over 40 but less than or equal to 50 we want over 50 so it's going to be that category and that category or that class interval and that class interval so how how many employees are over 50? Well, if we add these two numbers together, 44 and 29, that'll tell us how many of the employees are over 50, because all of these people, all these employees are over 50 years old, and these are obviously over 50 years old. So if we do 44 plus 29, and it's a calculator question, 44 plus 29 is equal to 73, so equal to 73, that's gonna go on our numerator. So it's gonna be 73 employees out of the 249, or 73, 249ths. And I'm just gonna check if this cancels down i really don't think it will but let's just check no that's it so what fraction of the employees are over 50 the answer is 73 249 and that's it and that's it so in this video we've looked at the video solutions to the mode or the modal class from a frequency table and also the range from a frequency table so we've looked at the solutions to those practice questions i really hope you found this video useful if you need any extra help on these topics go to the videos and worksheets section on the website and watch video number 56a and 57a but if you have found this video useful please like it and please subscribe to the youtube channel thank you cheers bye